listen, this is a public service announcement. To be careful around my dude Driftblim. This thing will both steal your children and your battles. Oftentimes it's gonna be both, but there's nothing you can really do about it. Anyway, welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle today. I've got a really good match here for you. I've got just about the most fun team in the game. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button. I'm on my way to 300k and you can help be a part of it. But let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Like I said, this is a really good match. I actually found this on my Discord server. The link is in the description if you'd like to have a battle with me or a community of other people. Go ahead and hop in there. We have fun. So I decided to lead off with my pin kerchin. Reason for that is because I figured, hey, this battlefield looks like it could be, it could use a little bit more yellow around the place. So I get that electric surge up, and now I'm just going to set up some toxic spikes. It doesn't look like they have much to be able to get rid of hazards. And if I can slowly get some chip, it's really going to help out the team in kind of the strategy I've got in mind. So... Uh, he actually ends up switching directly into the Quagsire. Now keep in mind this dude actually does have the Zoroark on his team, so I'm looking around at these Pokemon thinking any one of you bastards could be an imposter among us. The Quagsire, however, does seem pretty real, and Stickler does not have much to do here, so I decide to switch into the Squawk ability. Now the reason for that is because I'm expecting either something like a Stealth Rock or an Earthquake to happen. Regardless, I get this thing in, and then Parrot gets burnt, light that bitch up like a joint, and then I can start hitting stuff extremely hard with that guts boosted facade so it actually ends up going for a spikes and i'll tell you what it's not every day that you see a quagsire running spikes i honestly forget that this little fella can even do that like where does he get the spikes from nobody knows quagsire is just a mystery in general but uh, i do what i needed to do as i come in for free essentially here and get that burn activated did not even need to use a turn for protect which is it's always ideal so now i go for the facade knowing that everything on the team Pretty much does not want to take this. Squawkabilly in the lower tiers is an absolute beast, and I will not be told otherwise. And it turns out he actually enjoys pie. So in comes uh, Cyberpunk, looking delicious over here. And uh, the Guts Boosted Stab Facade is going to do nearly enough to take it out. Uh, and then, of course, you know this thing is not really going to be fast enough to do much. So it's looking like an apple pie buffet out here. And the Squawkabilly is positioned super well. Now, the poison is not enough to take care of it. However, this thing is looking pretty damn slow as I just take a little bit of that burn chip. So, I know that he does have the Tyranitar in the back, and that's kind of the one thing that stops the Squawkabilly sweep. Uh, so, what I decided to do here is actually knock this thing out with a U-turn. In the process, putting the Squawkabilly back in the old pocket, and I can save that thing for a later time. But I did what I needed to do, at least here now, uh, able to just kind of take care of the Appleton. So... The bad news about killing stuff on a U-turn is that I get to switch into whatever I want and then they can see that and then find a matchup. So I decided to actually go into the Drift Blim. I figure it is time for the Balloon Fiesta and see if we can't catch some stuff off guard. So I come in, I'm actually able to pop my Electric Seed. Now that's the reason why I run Pincurchin on this team is so uh, this thing switches into that. Not only giving me the defense boost but also giving my Unburden ability which doubles my speed. Uh, so in comes a Talonflame and I'm noticing something weird about this Talonflame. It gets poisoned by the poison spikes, which doesn't normally happen to a Talonflame, and that is because it's actually a Zorark in disguise, and my spikes have truly blown this man's cover. So now that I know that this is actually a Zorark, what I'm going to do is, I go for the Terra Fire. I basically just want to get rid of my ghost typing, because uh, I'm feeling like an Acrobatics is not going to kill here, even though I'm faster, and then I do not want to die to something like a Dark Pulse or just a Stab Dark move. So I go for the Acrobatics here. It does not kill like I expect, and it reveals that, yeah, it's just the Zorak over there. So that's a one that's one way to figure out if, you know, it turns out to be a Zorak. But goes for the Night Days. I'm able to live that because it's not super effective. And then down goes this thing to the Poison there. So I really, I had to use my Terra uh, if I wanted to keep the Drift Blim alive because the Blim still got some stuff to do. Um, and with that extra speed, I'm able to outspeed everything on the team. And the one problem here is the freaking Godzilla. And so I'm actually running uh, Terra Fire on this Drift Blim, mostly because I want to be able to hit Steel types uh, with the Terra Blast. However, if I was anything other than Fire here, I'd be positioned to go for a Strength Sap and get back to full while also dropping this thing's attack. But what I can do instead is just go right for a Destiny Bond, knowing that I'm faster, knowing that this thing wants to take care of me, uh, the, the I should be able to just knock this thing out with me. And that's exactly what happens. It does hit the Stone Edge. Uh, which is actually good, you know, ordinarily you're expecting, you're hoping for Stone Edge to miss against it, but in that case, it does take care of me, and in that case it works out pretty nice, because the Tyranitar is definitely an issue. So, down goes the Tyranitar, Drift Blim, he, with the Unburden, was able to do exactly what I wanted it to, and now we get a nice little empty battlefield, and I'll tell you who can take advantage of that is my homegirl Alolan Jinx, with these big old lips, ready to basically choice ban destroy anything on the other side, so... He's going to actually end up going into the Phalanx, looking like a pack of Milk Duds out here, and I'm feeling like this is pretty solid. A Psychic Fangs with a Choice Band 
absolutely destroys this thing and what the hell could go wrong it just you eat a nice delicious pack of milk duds and alone and jinx having a good time it actually has a lumberry there which is interesting to at least see its item and it turns out that these things run first impression i had literally no idea uh, i did not expect that not every day you see this pokemon and yeah first impression is literally just gonna kill me so that is a learning lesson there, as uh, these things definitely, they got first impression. So now we must we must rebuild. Unfortunately, Jinx comes in and just, you know, got destroyed. But that's fine. We still have Elvis, and this thing is still looking really well. Even looking better against the team now that the Tyranitar is gone. So what I can do here is I decide to go for the Brave Bird. I was honestly thinking, like, what if this is going to be, like, a Ghost Terra or something? I don't know. I go for Brave Bird just because I know it's going to kill regardless, and that is exactly what it does. So... Sometimes you gotta let the squawk feel a little bit brave. I don't know. This thing isn't really concerned about how much health it has as long as it can, you know, still get off a few attacks and burn damage really isn't that much. So now Squawkabilly would be positioned really well if it did, if it wasn't for the chicken they had on their side of the field because they have a Talon Flame and you know that thing's a little bit faster than <laughs> my my haircut bird over here. So in comes the actual Talon Flame. You know, does not get hit by those poison spikes because it's in the air, unlike the Zorak. So. What I decide to do here is, I know that Jolteon wins the matchup against this thing, so what I decide is I'm going to save the Squawkabilly for potential a little extra damage later against something like a Quagsire, and I decide to bring in Stickler, expecting Brave Bird. This thing even has Gale Wings with the priority on a Brave Bird uh, at full health, so I mean, Squawkabilly was definitely not winning that fight against old, old Fire Chicken here. So, I get up the Electric Surge, which will actually help with uh, Jolteon's electric damage, but they have a Quagsire in the back, so now I've actually kind of got myself in a corner. After losing Bruxish, I'm not really in the best spot, which I started off this match really hot, but now it's looking like he's going to use his Terra on the Talonflame, which makes this thing extra scary because now it's going to get boosted stab on a Flare Blitz, and yeah, my little homeboy Stickler is not going to be able to take that. This poor little fella gets absolutely exploded by that shit, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to take two. So it's come to the point in the match now where I'm starting to figure out, okay, I need something to be able to kill this Talonflame, and it makes it extra interesting that he has the Quagsire in the back. So I have the Go Goat for the Quagsire, but I basically need Jolteon to win the matchup against the Flame here. So I'm just going to click Memento, knowing that this thing basically just goes down to another Flare Blitz. Uh, and that is fine because it takes just that much more recoil. And then the Sandstorm is still up. So unfortunately, Stickler was not able to hit this thing with a Thunderbolt like I had hoped. Uh, however, we must adapt and overcome. If I can get through this Talonflame, I should be able to be positioned pretty well. So... The Sandstorm actually goes away, untimely, but now I get a free switch into Lightning McQueen. I'm on top of the Electric Surge, feeling like a million bucks out here, ka -chow. So, what I'm going to do is, instead of going for the Thunderbolt, knowing that his last Pokemon is the Quagsire, uh, the switch is kind of obvious here, and I'm Choice Spec. So what I decide to do is go for Shadow Ball instead, hoping that, you know, Spec Shadow Ball is still enough to take care of the Talonflame. If he goes Quagsire 2, should kill that thing. Uh, but he actually ends up staying in here, the Shadow Ball is not quite going to be able to take care of the Talonflame. Uh, but now I'm just hoping he goes for the Flare Blitz. He does click the Flare Blitz, which is amazing, because that is going to uh, just kill itself with the recoil. So while Jolteon does go down here, I got the exact amount of damage needed to be able to uh, at least make sure that I don't get the late game sweep from the Talonflame. This is a very scary Pokemon for my team once you realize that, hey, I don't have a whole lot defensively for that thing. So... Uh, down goes the Terramon. It's always good to know that this Quagsire in the back does not have the ability to change its type. And now I have either Go-Goat or Elvis to do it. I decide to go into Squawkability because this thing just deserves to get the kill. I just love seeing the Squawk come in and just hit shit hard with, with Facade. So, um, Derpy as Quagsire. Not going to be able to really take two Facades here. And I also know that a lot of the time the coverage on this thing is just going to be... Uh, Earthquake or Surf. Plus, with the Go Goat in the back, we're pretty much fine. So, I go for the facade. I honestly just want to see how much this does to a max defense Quagsire. Uh, and it does well over half. So, that's an easy two hit KO. As it goes for the recover, not going to really be able to outlast me, even though, you know, I have that burn damage. Um, he, he's taken more from the facade. Plus, uh, the, the poison from the Toxic Spike is helping me out there, even though I've only got up one layer. So, the Quagsire is going to eventually go down here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match. So, that was super interesting. That Talonflame definitely gave me quite the scare. But still, regardless, a really fun match. I have a lot of fun using this team. Uh, definitely a fun strategy. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment. I really enjoy reading all the comments that you guys come up with. And uh, I appreciate all of you. I'll see you next time. Peace out.